One of our featured patterns this month is the Japanese field clothing, pattern 112. This pattern has three um, garments in it. One is the hipari, which is an unlined jacket. The other is monpai, or field pants, that tie at the waist or can have an elasticized waist. And the other one is the padded jacket, um, which has kimono sleeves and it has batting inside, making it a kind of a warm coat. But we don't have, uh, Folkwear didn't have a sample of the um, padded jacket, so I'm going to make a sample and you get to follow along. The padded jacket is this one right here. This is also the hipari for women and men and the field pants all included in the pattern. I'm gonna use a um, hand-woven fabric from Guatemala for the jacket and some batting I had left over from making a quilt. I'm cutting the jacket pattern out, this padded jacket pattern out on the floor because it is really long and I wanted to just um, have enough room for it. So the often with Japanese patterns, and this can be, be true of a lot of folk patterns um, and traditional clothing, the back and the front are taped together at the shoulder. So there's no shoulder seam. The back and front are cut as one continuous piece. So you can see that I taped together here, the front and the back, um, matching the shoulder lines and the dots. So this will be cut as one continuous piece, front and back, two pieces. It will have a back uh, center seam. So I've laid out all my pieces um, for the Japanese um, uh, padded jacket from the field clothing pattern. And this fabric is only 36 inches wide. It is a hand woven fabric from um, Guatemala, actually. Um, and you, but this is traditional, uh, uh, the small, the narrow length is, is traditional in lots of cultures. You can see how almost perfectly the pattern fits, taking up all of the width and all of this beautiful hand woven fabric. I'm so glad that hardly any of it's gonna go to waste. And actually I wanted to make the sleeves longer anyway, so I'm going to have cut, be cutting the sleeves on each side all the way to the edge of the fabric. So now I'm getting ready to cut out the lining for the padded jacket and I'm cutting it from a just a, a cream colored muslin um, because it, it'll go well with the, the color of the fabric. And again, I tape the uh, front to the back at the shoulder, matching the shoulder line. And then I will cut this piece out as one piece. And then the other lining piece is going to be the, the sleeve. But since I made it wider uh, with this fabric, I'm just gonna use this piece to cut out the, um, the, the lining for the Three sleeve. Three and a half yards of fabric. When I cut out the main part of the padded jacket and I only have this much left for scraps. That was it. That's totally all and I can probably use this for some kind of little patch at some point somewhere. So really it'll just be this much left. Amazing. I have some batting left over from a quilt that I made my son and I'm gonna just make this work so you can see I cut out um, that was where the quilt was. This uh, is the edge so I have enough plenty for the sleeve and I'm gonna make it work for the body and I'll show you how in a minute. So a couple of things about the batting for the padded jacket. One is you need to line up and I've got this pattern upside down so it fits on here better. Um, you need to line up the, um, there's a folded line here that says um, the seam line for outer layer but the fold line for um, batting and so you can line up your batting with that fold line. I'm bringing it in just a little bit because I don't have quite enough room and I want to center this a little bit more. Um, also for sizes small and medium you can have an inch to a half an inch where you would you could trim the batting away from the edge but since I'm, I'm already pretty narrow on my, my the amount of batting I have I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it where I'm already giving um, an inch to um, on the sides for the batting. So all I have to do is come in and cut the front, um, center front. The other thing is the batting, um, you know, you're cutting this shorter than the main piece of fabric. So this is actually the, the batting cut line. It's about an inch below the, um, the hem fold line for the main fabric. Finally, for the neckband of the padded jacket, you need to cut on the fold um, the 
this neckband. And also, again, there's a cutting line for the batting. I've folded that under, so this is only how wide the neckband batting is. And um, you put this piece right here on the fold. Now, so that being said, I have just about run out of uh, batting, so I'm gonna actually cut this. This is fairly thin cotton batting, so I'm actually gonna cut two pieces of this, and hopefully that'll work out just fine. So, in the sewing notes of the pattern, it says the instructions appear to be long and complex. Actually, although much of the sewing is done by hand, the padded jacket is fun to make and not too difficult. Um, the original garments are not quilted, but padded, and so the layers are just held together with the seam allowance rather than stitching through all the layers. Um, you can stitch the entire jacket by hand, uh, which would be traditional. But I'm gonna probably do a little bit of a combination of machine stitching and, um, and, and hand stitching because some of it I believe is gonna be need to be done by hand. So the first thing is to take the main fabric and sew the back seam. So the back has been stitched together in the center back and I pressed the seam allowance to the left side. I did the same with the lining, pressing the seam allowance to the right side. And now I'm putting the batting onto the um, front back um, of the padded jacket. And I'm going to hand baste along the neckline. So I just hand basted within the seam allowance all down the neckline. I also just want to point out that I um, zigzagged this fabric, the main fabric, on this neckline edge because I didn't want to serge it because of the how it, it, it um, changes here. Um, but I also, this fabric is, is hand woven so it frays fairly easily so I wanted it to um, not fray as bad even though it's going to be on the inside. And there you can see the basting stitches. So now I have also basted along the side um, seam for the batting to the main fabric. And now I'm going to sew the lining fabric to the, to the main fabric, right sides together, on this bottom end here. Up the lining and the main fabric, and I'm matching the notches and dots, and I'm going to baste now along the back seam line. On the other side, you can see here's the, um, the, the seam allowance right here. I'm gonna baste along this to put all these layers together. Out of this um, back front piece of the padded jacket, and I hand basted a line of stitching about a quarter of an inch from this back seam line um, on the other side of where the seam allowance is. Now what I'm going to do is open this up, and this is to keep the layers from, from shifting. I'm going to open this up and I'm going to hand sew my hem allowance to the hem allowance that's underneath, um, which you can't quite see. You can't quite see, but it's, it's right there underneath this batting. I'm going to stitch through the seam allowance the batting and then the seam allowance of the main back piece back there without going to the outer outside of the outer piece. So it will be keeping all the stitching right in here. And I'm gonna use probably smaller um, smaller stitches than the, those long basting stitches. Fairly large, they really should be a little bit smaller, but um, making sure that I'm not getting through the bottom layer by putting my hand underneath to make sure that um, that needle is not coming out on the other side. So now you can see in the outer back layer, um, there are no, you can you don't see any stitching where I put those layers in. There's a few little threads. Um, and I'm going to remove this basting stitching line from the first um, step I did. So I just removed the basting threads and you have the back stitched together on the inside with no basting threads on the outside and can't see any basting threads on this inside lining either. I sewed right sides together the um, main piece of fabric to the lining piece and I had to kind of twist these around. So 
sewed them together and I'm finishing this with a serger because again, like I said, this is hand woven fabric. It will unravel easily even on the inside. Took, I'm putting right sides together. I'm folding the front over the back and I'm gonna stitch from the, um, you can see the, the squares in there. I'm just stitching the outer layer together from those squares down to um, the hem fold line, so down to here. And I'm gonna do it by machine. You can do it by hand, but I'm gonna do it by machine. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So I've now sewn the um, seam together for the back to the front on the outside. And you're now I'm gonna flip this so that I'm gonna continue to sew inside these, the, the basically the lining. So I'm gonna put these pieces together like this. I'm gonna sew inside up to um, the squares. So now I have the um, outer edges sewn together inside and out. And the next step is to come into the inside where those two, there's the inner side seam and the outer side seam and they've been pressed open. And I'm gonna put these together and the next step is to sew these seam allowances together on the inside so the, the garment doesn't slip. Uh, you can do this again with a running stitch, one of those kind of that small, I uh, consider it almost a small basting stitch, but that is um, the next step by hand. I stitched the inside seam allowances to each other and now I come to the close this back up. We're looking at the outside of the jacket and I'm going to baste all of these layers together all around over the neck and then back down, um, putting the batting, the inside, the lining, and the outside all together. So next we work on the neckband and folded or putting the neckband right sides together. You sew it and um, at the center back and press the seam open. But I put my batting on before I did that because you remember before I didn't have a whole piece that I could fold and then um, put on the neckband. So I just put the batting together with the neckband piece and um, sewed the neckband pieces together at the center back. Um, if you have, if you're folding it or have the folded piece of batting, you put that on after you stitch the main fabric together and then come through and hand baste again the uh, batting to the main fabric. Now this is on the side with the notches and my notches are, I marked them instead of cutting them this time. So it's on this side with the, with the notches. So I went ahead and finished off this seam on the neckband on all sides, just because again, like my fabric ravels, um, and I finished the batting and the, the um, seam allowance together on the neckband, and this way I'm not basting it either. So the next step is to take the um, neckband, center back of the neckband to the center back of the jacket, and match the dots to the dot, which is about right here on the neck, and then stitch between the dots. That I've transferred the markings to the batting because they were on the inside of this main fabric. Um, that way I can still see where the markings so are. After the neck is sewn on the, the back, uh, you're going to clip to the dot at the neck. And that helps with the next step. And I will say, don't make sure you don't clip the neckband. That helps with the next step, which is taking the neckband around to the front and sewing all the way down the front of the padded jacket. The neck band is sewn onto the jacket. And the next step is to fold the neck band um, one fold into the second fold. The lining is covered up by the batting, but it'll be right there. I'm going to press that all the way around. So the next step after you've pressed this and we've pressed the um, seam allowance toward the neckband is to do an accordion fold. So I'm going to take 
um, and put the right sides together of the neck band, folding on that um, fold line. And I'm going to line up the folded edge with the seam line right here. A little hard to do with one hand, but there, there it's done. And then, then a stitch from this edge all over to here, um, all lined up, and that will uh, enclose this end. So when you flip it around, it will be this. The end of the neckband will be enclosed. So a stitch from here to here, with this folded edge lined up with the seam line of the neckband to the the main fabric, or the body. So you can see I've now sewn that edge of the neckband. There's the inside, and I just flip it like this. And now that bottom seam of the neckband's enclosed. This is inside of the garment. And I will just turn this over and I'm gonna hand stitch it, I think. <laughs> I'm gonna hand stitch this neckband all the way up, enclosing the raw edge of the seam allowance. All the way around. So now the main part of the padded jacket is finished. The body of the jacket um, whip stitched the neckband down and now we work on the sleeves. So here are my sleeves and the first step to do is to baste the batting to the sleeve, to the inside of the sleeve. And I'm going to transfer my markings from the inside of the sleeve to the, the batting. Um, and this batting stays in place really well on this fabric. It may not on like a silk or something, but um, I'm still going to baste it in place because as I saw when working with the body, it really helps just keep everything in place and it doesn't take that long to do those big basting stitches. So I'm going to do that just to make sure everything's staying in, in place and all together. Also the basting stitches when I go around these curves, it will help keep the curves in place so that they don't stretch out and, and I'll be sure as I'm basting not to stretch them out as well. Okay, so now I've basted the batting to the sleeve, but I'm going to now finish the sleeve edges other than the selvaged edge. The selvaged edge I won't finish. And a couple reasons for that. One is that I'm going to trim off some of this excess fabric uh, or batting because when I cut the batting I used the fabric as the template and that meant that I got a little bit extra um, batting. So, um, and also the batting stretches a bit. So that's just what happens. Um, but I also, this will, this will keep, again, keep my edges from fraying, um, and, and it'll secure the batting to this, but I, I, it's, in, I think it's still important to baste, partly because I, I did some smaller curves here, or smaller stitches at the curve, so that it won't stretch out, and I also am securing the batting to the sleeve part so when it goes through the serger it won't shift. So the next step is to take the sleeve facings which I have right here and these um, I cut out of the main fabric because I didn't want to waste any fabric and it fit perfectly. Um, but they can also be you know made out of any kind of fabric you have especially a, a, I think traditional is a dark um, tightly woven cotton black or brown or dark blue. Um, so the, the next thing to do is to, we're going to fold under um, on all the, this is my notches, I've, I've just drawn them in here, folding under half an inch on all the unnotched sides and doing a mitered corner. So the way I do mitered corners is I fold it up, scrap, I fold it up half an inch on the bottom, I'm folding in and pressing a half an inch on the side, then I unfold it and where that point is, fold in the corner and then fold these together and you'll have 
a nice mitered corner, and then I press. And there's the mitered corner. You can see there, press, press, and finished. So the next step is to take the lining pieces of the sleeve and put the sleeve facing the wrong side of the sleeve facing to the right side of the lining. Now my lining is the same on each side, so it doesn't really matter. Um, and now I'm going to baste the lining to the sleeve. And then you can catch stitch or slip stitch the um, finished folded edges to the lining. I am probably just going to stitch just an edge stitch really close to the edge and get this down. So the next step is to take the sleeve, the outer sleeve with the batting, fold it in half, and we're going to sew from the box around the curve to the edge right here on both sleeves. So box around the curve and right sides of the sleeve are together, just the sleeve and batting. So once that's done, you turn the sleeves right side out and instead of pressing the, the seam flat, like you might think, you actually press it, um, yeah, press it open, you actually press it flat. So pressing this curve flat um, instead of pressing the seam allowance open. Now this is an interesting part. The lining of the sleeve is going to go right sides together, so that's the part of the lining that has the facing on it, right sides together to the outer layer and matching the boxes. So there's the the box on the outer layer is right, or the box on the lining is right here. I'm matching it to where the box was um, on the outer layer and then I am pinning this all the way around so that um, again this box uh, right and the, the notches will match and the box that's right here will match right there but I'm pinning so that the um, lining layer is an eighth of an inch um, the seam allowance is coming out an eighth of an eighth of an inch further than the outer layer. So when I go to stitch these together, there will be a five eighths seam allowance on the lining and a half an inch seam allowance on the outer layer, batting layer. You can see here, I am stitching the lining to the, um, the linings on the bottom and the outer fabric but the batting is on top and I'm stitching with a 5 8 inch seam allowance with the lining 1 8 wider than the batting so the batting and, and the outer layer are actually getting stitched on a half inch seam allowance and that is how I'm gonna stitch all the way around this opening and because it's just too hard to get in this section back here with you know where the the squares are I'm gonna stitch that little bit by hand so then you take you've, you've sewn the lining and the outer line layers together and you open this up and press the seam toward the lining then we're gonna turn both of them inside out and do the next step so now you can see I've turned this one this sleeve the outer sleeve and the lining inside out um, and then open them up so they're away from each other and I'm going to stitch the lining with a 5 8 inch uh, seam allowance from here where the, the box is, around the curve, all the way to here. So I've sewn the lining together and um, one of the things you can do now is to sew one seam allowance here to the seam allowance on the lining, just sort of basting them together and going all the way down like this to about an inch um, uh, before the raw edges. I'm not going to do this because my batting is pretty sticky. The fabric I'm using, it sticks together pretty well or it's not silk and it's just not a lot of space. <laughs> so I, I don't think, you know, it's not going to shift that much. Um, so that is what I'm going to do. Otherwise, you know, if you're using different fabric or um, you want to want to do this the traditional way, then go ahead and do it. I'm not. I'm going to skip this step for now, um, and hopefully, won't regret it.
So for the next step, I turned my sleeve inside out. The lining is um, on the, the inside, um, but it's now facing outward. And I'm lining up the, the sleeve, this is the sleeve, with the body of the jacket. And I'm gonna have to pin back these lining pieces and I'm matching the outer edge of the body with the outer edge of the sleeve and I'm going to pin them together at the stars and I'm going to stitch all the way around to the shoulder to the star on the other side, keeping the lining out of the way. So now you can see I've stitched the body to the sleeve with the outer fabric. I pressed the seam open and now I'm going to um, press under the remaining, so the, the underarm is open on these sleeves. Um, I'm going to press under the main fabric, uh, the seam allowance of the main fabric, all the way to the under part of the sleeve. And then I'm going to take this lining, press under the seam allowance there, and then slip stitch it to the main fabric all the way around. So I'm going to do it on this one, and then um, I'll be doing the same on the main part, the main, the main body of the coat. So you can see I've stitched down the lining um, to the sleeve and the underarm, and now I'm gonna do the same. I've got the lining, I'm gonna slip stitch the body lining down, and then this side will be finished. And I'll do the same thing for the other sleeve. Second sleeve, and I will say that I went back on that first sleeve and I did actually stitch the lining from um, the, the opening, which is, no, I can't find it. Um, but I stitched the the one side of a seam allowance of the lining to the other side of the, another side of the seam allowance of the main fabric, and now I'm gonna flip it right side out. Oh yeah, and it's actually the opening is in here. So now I have you can see that I've stitched that lining to the main part. I'm going to now turn it. Um, so the lining is will be facing the batting. Okay, so I have finished now putting the sleeves on, uh, putting the lining in the sleeves, getting the sleeves underneath finished. That took quite a while. It would be great to, if you had a movie to watch um, or a television, a couple television shows. It didn't take really that long, but it was probably the longest part of making this um, jacket. Now I'm going to make the ties. So here is the jacket um, finished. I'm gonna, the ties would go right here so it can be closed. You don't have to add the ties if you just wanted to have it be open. Um, <clears throat> they certainly don't need to be added. I'm gonna attach them to the inside here so that it can be op left open or it can be tied closed. But the sleeves are exactly the length that I wanted them. I love that. And this is just a warm, absolutely gorgeous jacket. For the ties, each short end is folded under and then uh, the long edges are folded to meet in the middle. And then they'll be folded over again and top stitched. So I'm gonna press in here and in here and then fold them together finished and I'm going to attach them to the inside here. I'm going to do it by hand because I don't want to sew through all of these layers of fabric with the machine. So I'm going to put this one here and then 
the jacket will be finished. So I finished the jacket and this is it. The ties are in, keeps it shut if I want it shut. The arms are beautiful. I love the sleeves. It's just a really fun, absolutely gorgeous coat. You can see the back a little bit. And it's really gonna be warm.